Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. I am stoked because it is race weekend. I'm repping my Formula One shirt, uh, my winnings from last year's Formula One pool. So I'm um, getting excited for that, but let's get to it. So this, um, I was working on this video for a while now and uh, a, a viewer whose name's Morgan um, asked for this as well. So Morgan, hopefully um, you're, you're into this. Uh, suggested some residential REITs and I was kind of in the midst of working on this video anyway so uh, I took those suggestions. So I did an in-depth video about uh, about REITs and about how they are performing you know in the current market and uh, those ones in that video I talked about specifically Rio Can and Smart Centers. This was a while ago uh, but I did mention that the commercial REITs you know not maybe doing so good, not doing as good as uh, maybe the residential REITs. And these are all Canadian REITs that I'm talking about. The theory there was that, well, basically, you know, uh, the commercial centers were kind of shut down at the time, especially lots of places were closed, businesses were running out of money and closing down. Uh, but what was gonna happen with people re people's residences? Well, if you guys are living in Canada, you know that the government did help in a few different ways. Obviously there's employment insurance, but they also, um, the banks also allowed folks to defer mortgage payments and that kind of thing temporarily. Uh, but the the main thing is that uh, residential REITs, while not fully recovered, are, are kind of on their way up. So in this video, I'm going to compare four apartment residential REITs. They are Killam, Cap REIT, Interrent, and Minto. Um, they are of varying, you know, different sizes, different types of spreads across the country. We'll get into all of that stuff, but first... All right guys, so if you're new here, my name is Sean. I do uh, personal finance and investing videos, so welcome to the channel. Remember in the video about REITs, I did a video about how to analyze them, that uh, they're special because they exist to essentially pay dividends to its investors. It wasn't unusual in those rough times when prices were down to see yields of uh, five, six, seven percent. Now those days are, are actually behind us. The REITs we're gonna cover today all have something between like the two to three, three and a half percent yield rate. So back to kind of what we're maybe more used to. I'll go into who's recovering better than their peers and all that kind of stuff in the next section. But really you wanna know which one of these REITs like you should look at. So we're gonna look at these four and uh, we'll do a bit of a comparison and I've just put everything into a spreadsheet. Um, but first I just wanna introduce what these four um, companies are just so that you can understand some of the differences, some of the things that I noticed about them. So Killam is the first one. They are a company based out of Halifax. They own and operate buildings across the country. They're in seven provinces from what I could count there. They, it's also worth noting they had a kind of a nice um, package about uh, ESG and some of the targets that they had in that part of their business, which is nice to see. Next up is Capri, which stands for Canadian Apartment Properties. That's what CAP stands for. Um, it's headquartered in Toronto. It's across eight provinces in Canada. Plus it has some properties in the Netherlands and Ireland, which is a bit of a unique twist on that one. Um, it also has a nice kind of ESG package that you can read through. And this one by kind of uh, value and, and even number of properties is the largest of the four we're gonna talk about. Next up is Interrent. It's got 10,000 suites across 15 cities in Ontario and Quebec. Its headquarters is in Ottawa. They don't really have an ESG component, but it does really feel, even their, their kind of their manager's um, presentation feels very small and uh, family oriented type of team and culture. Um, so there are a lot of uh, different things that you could see people volunteering for, employees volunteering for, and donations that were made and that kind of thing. They just haven't officially, you know, packaged that into like an ESG type of package. I think it's just maybe probably a bit of a smaller company. Uh, finally, there's Minto headquarters in, in Ottawa. It's got 29 properties in Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Can Calgary, and Edmonton. So a little bit of a spread, but maybe not as big as Killam and Capri there. In 2020, they launched their first project in Vancouver. It's being developed right now. So they'll be, you know, in BC as well, probably soon. And then a uh, comment on the ESG, their, their current, their target is to by Q3 have an actual ESG report. So these guys are still developing that area of the business as well. For now, they just have some point form uh, types of notes that were quite generic to be honest, but they're working on it, so that's great. So we will jump into this uh, into this table. All of these numbers, uh, like in the blue section, are taken from Yahoo Finance. The, uh, the yellow sections are all annual 
financials from the 2020 annual report uh, for each of these. And I'll leave links to all the reports in the description of this video. So just looking at the top, like I said, CapRate has got the biggest market cap. It's the biggest company of all of these. And, uh, and uh, you know, rightfully, rightfully so, probably owns the most buildings and suites and units. So I did put a stat here for the 2020 peak with just before, you know, the stock market kind of kind of dove in March last year. And then the current price to show you, you know, how affected these guys have been since March of 2020. So you can see CapRate, not very affected there are the least effective of this group whereas the rest of them are anywhere between 16 and 20 percent down of their price of march in 2020 last year and and i think a lot of this is maybe just again people have comfort in the size of cap and uh while the other companies are, are maybe a bit smaller um there's also a bit of diversification definitely between the first two then the last two uh, the last two, you know, are concentrated into only a few municipalities and Interrent especially is only in uh, the Ontario and Quebec area. So it kind of depends what you want for your portfolio. If you like putting your eggs in only one or two baskets, um, that's fine. Whereas the other ones give you some diversification there. Uh, I've listed the annual dividend. You can see that uh, the most attractive one is Killam and uh, and maybe the least you could say is Minto. But uh, but again, you know, that's they're very close, uh, especially the last three. From their financials, you can tell here that uh, the revenues were quite high. You can see from the growth numbers year over year that CapRead has grown quite steadily and, uh, and actually Minto has been one of the better growers of this uh, batch of REITs. Um, there's some net operating income stats here where the growth year over year, again, pretty healthy. Like they're all growing, which is good. Um, and then Minto and, uh, and CapRead have grown the most. And what net operating income is, is really the dollars being brought in by collecting rent from all of these suites that are owned by the REITs, but also, you know, subtracting all the, all the, all the fees and the operating costs. So that's what that number is. So when you see it go up, that's a good thing. Uh, it could be going up because they are acquiring more, more units or it could also be going up uh, because of something called same property NOI, which means properties that were owned both last year and this year, uh, excluding anything that was uh, that has been bought in 2020. I tried to find some information on sales and the only thing I could find was that uh, CapRate had sold three properties in different provinces over the last year. Those properties were worth about $31 million, which is uh, you know now, now cash for them to go on and do something else with. Total net income, you can see uh, definitely the highest there being CapRate. And then the occupancy numbers are also kind of interesting to me. And you can see that CapRate's properties um, kill them. Actually, all of them are doing quite well. The lowest being interrent, which is, uh, I don't know if that's a function of just, uh, the situation in Ottawa and Quebec, but, um, all of them were down from last year. And the, the biggest one going down was, uh, was actually Minto is down 1.44%. Kill is down about 0.4%. Caprit's down 0.7% and interrent is down 0.43%. Now, anything over 97, I'm usually quite happy with. I think that's quite normal. Um, so I would be a little bit, uh, a little bit curious about Minto here uh, being under that. Let's let's move on into the ratios. So current ratio is your current assets over your current liabilities, and your total ratio is all your assets over all your liabilities. And you can see the current ratio, a super low one here for uh, for. Kill them. This current ratio could also be why um, the the stock, as big as this company is, took as big of a hit and hasn't recovered quite as quickly as CapRead. Um, and it just be just being because they have they have such little um, assets compared to their liabilities and uh, and you know a higher amount of debt. That would be a red flag for an investor. But there's one one other reason I'll I'll get into that uh, in a bit here. Total ratio. Are, are way over one on all of these because of the nature of their business. And that is uh, why we don't typically, you know, we don't we don't just look at these for REITs and, and we look at something called funds from operations, which are next. This tells you the cash flow coming off of the rent and other um, investments from this company. And then we're gonna compare it to the distributions because that's why people buy REITs is to get those distributions, those dividends. And then we kind of see like, what sort of percentage of these funds are gonna be given away as dividends, and that's the payout ratio. So you can see here, funds from operations are listed across the top. The funds for operations per share, this is just the FFO divided by the number of outstanding shares. 
the distribution is the dividend, and then the payout ratio, the first three, you know, quite healthy, probably what is typical or where you wanna be at this time. But I did notice that Minto was quite a lot lower. And, uh, and there are rules in place that require REITs to give as much of the funds to the, back to the investors. Um, so, there, so I did go back and double check these numbers to make sure they were right, but and sure enough, they are. I'm not actually sure why it was so low, other than the, thinking that they might be using the funds to go out and purchase other property, and therefore it's not available to give back its dividends. But I did go back and check for all these companies, despite you know what was going on with the illness and everything, they were all raising their dividends throughout 2020 and 2021 so far. So um, there, there wasn't a situation like Rio can where dividends had to be cut. Um, all of these companies have kind of uh, survived that sort of blip in March 2020. So that gives you some confidence that all of these would be kind of a, you know, a reasonable uh, investment for a REIT. So here I've charted the four different REITs and you can see they're, they're kind of all over the place as far as like where their peaks and valleys are. They all kind of peaked in March, kind of went down and uh, have been slowly recovering. I'm looking at Killam and they're not quite as volatile or in, in both directions as the other ones are. And since uh, then, you know, the other ones have, have increased in percentage. And since uh, October of last year, which was the, the most recent low, uh, they all have kind of, you know, started to recover and are moving in the right direction now. The reason I'm thinking that, you know, um, Killam is just having a hard time coming up is just, is just that, uh, you know, the, the, the probably has the highest in debt ratio uh, right now. And then it also has that commercial aspect to it. Now, a couple of just like of notes, and then I'll get to my conclusion about these, is that uh, Killam actually has a little bit of commercial mixed in. And that was what I was gonna say, was probably why I see it, even though being diversifi diversified, um, taking a little bit of a bigger hit than, than cap read. But if you like that diversification in other times, you know, when residential REITs aren't doing so good, that's probably a good thing for Killam. And they also have these manufactured homes, which they have been pushing in their financial uh, statements. And that is, I believe, prefabricated housing that they can ship out and they make a good margin on those as well. So I actually don't think it should be penalized or the stock should be as low as, as it kind of is right now. Maybe that's like the biggest opportunity in these four choices right now. Um, but you know, obviously do your research. That's kind of what I was able to gather from reading myself. Killam has also purchased 10 assets. And so they have, uh, they've purchased 10 assets and spent 211 million on that. So that's uh, important to note as well, because that's part of the changes in their balance sheet for next year, but that's great. It's a, it's a good time to buy property if you have the cash and um, they're at good prices. So it's good to see Kilm continue to expand. Caprite is also into that uh, manufactured home uh, type of thing. And, uh, and so they're, they're continuing to grow that business. So it's worth, you know, knowing that there. So I'm not invested in any of these REITs at the moment. So I, I have to be fully transparent there. But if I had to pick one, I think I would be going between Killam and Capri. Cap Killam has the, has the lower price right now, but I don't think they're in any trouble personally. Their revenues are still strong. They're still growing year over year. And uh, they have an attractive three and a half percent yield, which is still increasing uh, even you know through 2020 and 2021. The thing I like about Capreed is it's been the most resilient, so it gives me comfort knowing that the the company has been managing its assets very well and being able to you know squeeze a little bit of extra funds even out of the existing assets. But it also has that piece in Netherlands and Ireland, which kind of makes me uh, feel like it's really got the best diversification of all of these REITs. So those are the two that I would kind of make my top right now. I think Interrent is a little too regional for me and Minto maybe just a little too small. They're gonna be a little bit more volatile right now, but um, Minto is still probably, you know, an up and comer that, uh, that can end up doing very well. It's actually got really impressive growth numbers, as you can see from the table. So um, that one would be like your, your bit of a riskier play, uh, whereas Capreed is more of your safer play. And that's just showing up in the performance here. The biggest thing for me, again, for REITs is kind of like, where are they and what are they, how are they diversified and how do they, and what sort of portfolio do they have? So that's where I kind of feel like Interrent wouldn't really fit my personal type of investing because they're too focused 
focused on um, Ottawa and Quebec right now for me. And I'd probably go for some of the other three, probably Killam or Capri. Whew, holy smokes, guys. It's getting warm in here. All right, guys. Well, I will finish the video right there. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Spread the wealth and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to look at uh, four different residential apartment REITs. They are Killam, Cap, REIT, Interrent, and those four are Killam, Cap, REIT, Interrent, and So in this video, I'm going to compare four apartment residential